Okay, here we are. Welcome again to the Airships Dev Stream. I'm going to do this slightly old school this time. Um, no video because um, then I don't have to wear a shirt. I won't have a heat quite as much, maybe. That is certainly the plan I'm going for right now. Okay, so what are we doing today? Well, it's still the thing about wanting airship feet, uh, landship feet, to actually be able to interact with physical objects. So, um, stomp on the ground, crush the ground, um, crush, um, crush um, troops and stuff like that. And I've been thinking about like various uh, ways of approaching that. Um, and the one I've settled on at the moment is. Um, looking into basically adding each foot as a little physics object that then gets moved around. So I'm going to actually start doing the screen sharing now. Huh? Pop, here we are. I'm just going to show you what this whole landship thing looks like right now and I'm going to show you um, the kind of thing which I want to achieve. Um, oh yeah, um, one moment, I'll be right back. and I possess the magical iPad of Twitch chat monitoring at least until it runs out of power. Okay, so demonstrating feet. If we set up some kind of a big stompy landship here and start the game so you can see the feet basically move forwards and stand on stuff. But the issue is that um, the weight of the landship isn't actually being transferred onto the thing it's standing on. So um, no matter what, it's not gonna. Um, you can't actually crush anything, and it's uh, capable of. If I show you another example. It's quite capable of standing on the top of trees like that because um, the weight of the ship doesn't get transferred onto the leaves. This should, of course, not work, right? So, boink, boink. Um, so, the way we want to fix this is to try. So, right now, the um, Landship has one physics object, which is this thing here, this block here. And I'm going to add a little physics object for each foot, so the feet can then intersect with uh, everything else. So I'm going to give that a try. Okay, adding adding physics objects fundamentally. We have this physics thing, and we can add arbitrary body objects to it, and it will then deal with um, it will then deal with things like collisions. So we're just going to try creating a foot object, and then adding that in, and sort of see how well that goes. Are we going to make this super stupid? Okay, so the the thing is like, how does this foot move? The other physics objects kind of have a proper movement concept of like um, acceleration and whatnot, um, 
these feet are they don't really because they just kind of get moved by the um logic of the airships uh walking so how do we do this um we're just gonna re-update the position of the foot um each tick and discard whatever might have happened to it so even if the physics says oh this foot got block knocked to the left we're just going to ignore this information and just reset the foot's position and we'll see how well that actually goes okay um we go it's some kind of body now we need to implement all of these methods to make it interact correctly with the world what do we need to know we need to know um, what chip the foot's attached to um, it's probably all right now, oh, and we need the width and the height. There. And the X and the Y are already given from the body class it's extending. And the physics rect. Okay. Fun times, what's the difference in between get collision mass and get mass, huh? Um, they will know, but we're just gonna basically proxy all of this information to the ship. Okay, so when should it be removed? Uh, it should be removed when the legs are destroyed, so it's probably easiest for now. If we just make this an explicit flag, that can be set from the ship's update function. The elasticity physics-wise, I'm just going to say that's whatever the um, ship itself has in terms of elasticity and we're not going to care about the friction right now does it collide with some other um, physics rectangle well, the answer is basically, um, does the other thing think, think it's, uh, it's going to collide? Um, well, it doesn't quite work because then we might get infinite loops like two um, feet colliding and so on. So we're going to say if B2 instance of, um, so for example, if you're going to airship, And look at collides with here, it just does a bunch of checks. So we're gonna do oil land formation again. So if it's an airship. we can safely ask the, the airship or if it's a land formation 
um, you can also add our salam formation. And otherwise, if it's some other thing, we're basically going to assume that. So we're modeling the foot just as a simple rectangle, and we can model everything else also as a simple rectangle. So then we just go return rect 2d dot intersects x y. Mm. So for any other collision, we assume that bounding boxes are sufficient. Next thing is doing collision. Well, we're just like feet are immortal. Feet can't get damaged by hitting things currently. I might need fixing at some point. And finally the width and the height of the bounding docks are just the width and the height that we specify. Okay, so this basically um, gives us all the information that we need for um, defining a foot within the physics engine. And uh, the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to create these foot objects and we need to insert them into the physics and then we need to update them um, so that they're actually in the right place for these sorts of collisions to happen. Okay, um, first thing is actually creating them. And that's simply a question of each leg should have a foot. Okay, pretty simple. Public foot foot. Ta-da! Oh, um, importantly, just remembered um, this needs to be strict strict FP and actually um, as a consequence a lot of other things need to be that too so what strict FP means is that um, okay so floating point numbers are kind of fractional numbers used by the computer and um, they're always they're not perfectly precise but they're a very good approximation um and often you know and 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 this is kind of enough but different computers different architectures um will make slightly different results in floating point calculations because they they do the calculations a bit differently they use slightly different kind of shortcuts to make the calculations um, have good performance. And this is usually fine. Um, it makes makes it faster and, you know, not, it doesn't really matter. Um, but in some circumstances, you want the calculations to be reproducible across machines. And um, with airships, this is exactly the case because um, in multiplayer, of course, um, everything in multiplayer has to you know, behave in the same way, um, given the same inputs, and so it's important that the um, that all the calculations that are meaningful game mechanically need to be done using the same floating point calculations. And what the strict FP thing does is just a keyword saying, okay, Java, um, use the um, official standard for floating point calculations um, and um, do the calculations according to that standard no matter what machine you're on which means the results are consistent it just also means that sometimes they're quite a bit slower but you know um, otherwise um, what can happen is you get the kind of butterfly effect where due to a minor rounding error um, relative in between two machines fighting against each other um eventually um what happens diverges completely right um like a shot misses a ship by a smidgen and hits it just barely on the other side um on the other machine and from that the the combat ends up happening differently okay so we're gonna have to go back through now and look at other stuff that 
also ends up having to be strict FP. So legs are already strict FP, that's good. That's what they should be. Directions are two. Okay, so this is probably fine actually. Lex and the specs are already set to this strict FP thing, so this should be consistent precisely. Um, as long as um, as long as the feet were purely cosmetic, um, it wasn't actually necessary to do this because it didn't really matter if they ended up moving slightly differently cosmetically across two machines. But now it does matter. Okay. So legs have feet, and um, we need to init those feet. Um, Okay, we need to have a constructor for our feet, where we need to say the ship, the width and the height, and actually I'll also the x and the y coordinates. Okay, so what do we know about the feet? Um, well, we know the width and the height actually. We don't know the x and the y yet, we can have to calculate that in a moment. But the width is the foot width, which is passed in, so spec dot foot width, spec dot foot height. Awesome. Now we just need to figure out the x and the y coordinates which are um, basically what we get from get footprints. Now it's, this is a little bit awkward because, uh, well, we don't know the position of the ship yet really, so um, it's quite likely that um, it's quite likely that the position of the ship will change after we initialize the feet and then send the position of the feet relative to the ship will be wrong. Um, nevertheless, for sanity's sake, we should probably set it correctly right from the start. Um, the easiest place to find the correct calculation is probably going to be in ship layers because that's where we actually draw the feet. And one thing we can do in a, in a bit to sanity check that um, the foot logic works correctly is to also draw, apart from the drawing we've got right now for drawing the feet, we can also draw a kind of a little rectangle or something um, where the foot object is itself and that will hopefully be the correct uh, location. Okay. So it's really this hip X, hip Y stuff which we need as usual. The MX and the MY. And in order to actually do that correctly, we also need to pass in, at least temporarily, which module we're actually attached to. Okay, so. So we figure out where the module is. Um, from there we can figure out where the hip is. Okay. 
and from there we can using the get foot point calculation figure out where the foot is relative to the hip and that now gives us the actual position of the foot in um, the absolute coordinate system of the combat um, which is going to be hip x plus foot put dot x minus spec dot foot width because divided by 2 because we are looking at um, this is like the point this is like the center of the foot right um, yeah that's right for that As for the y it's uh, a good question um. Okay, we subtracted high foot height. So in this case, it's just hip y plus foot put y. Okay. So uh, now our legs are feet. Awesome. And then in the move foot to function now, we should rather well um, update the um, actual location of the foot object. And actually to do that, we now need to permanently remember which airship we're attached to and permanently remember which module we're attached to so we can redo this calculation correctly. Okay, um, so There we go. Then we're just going to go public void update foot position. Basically, take all of this calculation we've just been doing to calculate where the foot is. Move it in here. There we go. Then anywhere we change the upper and lower rotation, which is just in um, move foot two, we can do update put position. Actually, we want to do it here too just to keep the location of the um, foot physics object correct. Okay, so that works. Um, the, there's still going to be a whole bunch of problems here. Like the major problem is that um, like for proper physics body, um, there's really all of this information, like um, the force being applied to it, the speed of it, and so on, um, which are currently just all going to be empty. Um, so basically, 
the um, the feet are going to have mass but not speed or rather the only speed that they're going to have is the one caused like in the given tick by uh, gravity and what this means concretely I think is that um, the force um, caused by the stomping of feet is going to be only the force that would happen if the foot was just resting on the on the ground um, so if if the lunch like if the landship gets put very gingerly placed on the surface with infinite care and it then still breaks the surface because it's still too heavy then that will work but of course if it's actually stomping along then hey it's moving at some um, more significant speed and uh, that much more significant speed ought to um, have more dire consequences in terms of how much damage it does and indeed one of the things I might have to do is I might have to severely reduce the amount of damage or impact force that feet, that feet have um, because depending on how the calculations work out you might end up um, with a heavy land ship where each footstep just destroys the ground below it and uh, while that sounds cool remember that um, the ground is quantized in units of like three meters of height so we're talking about um, it making a three meter deep crater with each step which means it's just going to sink into the ground almost instantaneously which is not what we want okay anyway so we've got it in here in the um, in the legs now and we've got the code to update its position and now the other thing that we need to do is we need to actually add it to the physics engine when it um, um, at initialization we're just going to ignore the questions of it being destroyed for now oh, and the other thing we want to do is just draw the foot objects in the natural habitat so I uh, just draw a kind of a red rectangle <laughs> of um, where the foot physics objects are so they can see if they tra track correctly with where the feet are being drawn Okay, so final step going into combat and going physics. Yeah, there we go. go and indeed I'm just gonna do this correctly so at least if they stomp off into the reserve they're gonna be um, going to have the foot objects deleted here okay so um, let's just hit start and see what happens um, okay one or more projects will compile with errors that's because I changed around some things there we go try again OK, 
Okay, let's see if we can get this grasshopper. Okay, so first off, foot position looks actually perfect. So that's being drawn in the right place. Now let's see um, if they actually exert some pressure. Mm, if they do, it's such a light pressure that no one notices. Oh yes, now, well... Well, it did something. Didn't necessarily do what it should have. Okay, I know why. The issue is that... Um, so the, the feet collided with uh, bits of tree and so on. And then, and when they did that, they um, acquired a velocity. And um, while the position was being reset, the velocity wasn't being reset. And so with each tick, they were kind of instantly fly in some kind of direction. I think that's, well, I certainly think that's wrong. If it's the only thing that's wrong, who knows? Okay, so let's just really get this down. Foot dots. X speed is zero. Foot dot Y speed is zero. Foot dot X force is zero. Okay, let's see what that does. Then I'm gonna go for a short break of some sort, and then we are going to continue refining this process. The break is for figuring out um, where the cats are, if they've fallen off the balcony yet, and for seeing when people arrive, and when dinner is, and other weak human concerns. Right, let's just try this again. Oh yeah, if you watch a previous stream, you may have been going this whole time, but that's not what he was doing last time. Uh, I have just changed my mind about how to best do this with the feet. Okay, move a bit. Okay, no instant foolishness. Also, no fun and entertaining crashing, so. Hmm. Oops. Okay, so that um, leg module is now nearly dead. Okay, so that was weird and interesting. Is it was somehow taking damage? Oh god, okay. Right, the reason it's randomly taking damage is that it's colliding with its own feet. Yep, yeah, um, actually I was talking to um, a player on um, Steam chat, I think, and he pointed out that feet shouldn't collide with each other and even said like yeah yeah feet shouldn't collide with each other good point and um then i haven't actually put that in yet so that's gonna have to be our very next thing making feet not collide with each other for now i'm um actually i'm just gonna set up like some kind of large-scale combat and watch you let you watch some shootage And wander off for a moment to figure out my weak human concerns. Huh? Did 
There we go. Short combat intermission. Okay, I return. I hope the intermission was entertaining. Having some fighting might be quite a nice way of breaking things up in between. Might even do a bit of a mixture of development and straight playing at some point. But for now, let's just exit out and continue with our work. Which is... Um, making feet not collide with each other and um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to do the kind of standard thing which is um, collision groups so we're going to say that any physics rect no not actually no physics rect how does this work uh, yeah physics rects collide with um, bodies dot, but not vice versa so we already have this but then inside bodies we now also need to have um, okay calling a collision group is a bit bad because there's already something called the collider group um, And anyway, it's a group of things that don't collide. So let's just call it group. So meaningful. Right. And now a whole bunch of stuff is going to break. There we go. Um. Okay, how does this actually work? Now we're going to do it differently because each airship just needs to not collide with its little body feet and we can just put that into the collides with logic itself. So in foot it 
if b2 is a variant chip, we then can arrive with our variant chip. And equally in airship, if b2 instance of foot uh, and And we are the foot ship. We do not collide with that foot. Okay, so that should help. Now the next thing we really want to do is look at um, how we can maybe get the movement of things working correctly. Actually, let's just let's just see what this does. If this has fixed the problem, then the next thing I would like to see is I would just like to see one of the feet actually crashing something. Oh wow, yeah. Okay, so... Under certain conditions... <laughs> under certain conditions, when it stops updating the foot positions, they just, the feet just fall down <laughs> temporarily. Um, kind of cut loose from their mummy, daddy, entity, object thing. This is not so good. And it's fixing. Boing! Look at that, look at that. So if it's spidering with the legs, it doesn't update the foot positions after spidering yet. <laughs> Just drops them temporarily and makes holes in the ground. Okay, so the spidering response still needs to call update foot position. Like here, maybe. Hmm. But somewhere it must be changing the upper rotation. That's just the initialization. Oh, 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 here, no, wait, no, uh. Okay, so this is the spidering response. But then in module, if we're spidering, we're all of a sudden not updating the position at all. Which is bad.
Ah, oh, yeah. So if we're not touching the ground, then we want to do a much simpler thing. So basically, this is happening only in the complete spidering mode, when none of the feet were touching the ground. It just went, hey, I don't have to update anything. And this turns out to be slightly wrong. Um, because we do still now have to update the foot position. Okay. So that works. Um, now the question is how do we get the um the um how do we get it to kind of impact more strongly um because right now the reason why why it's only ever doing any damage when the like foot objects are falling down incorrectly is that it's not taking into account um it's not taking into account the fact that the feet actually move and hence have a speed. Um, bloop. Yes. There. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, I think the way to do this is as follows. We figure out new X and Y positions. For where the feet need to go. And we then set the foot's speed to actually go there in the next tick. I think this will work. Catch okay, just fire. Um, unless, of course. We do need to set it immediately because we are just setting up the foot for the first time. Otherwise, we do we don't actually change the x and the y of the foot ourselves, but rather do foot dot. Speed equals foot x two minus foot dot x divided tick length. There. That might work. I have a horrendous feeling that this will cause weird behaviour in the extreme because I think sometimes the feet can be very fast. Mm, let's just see what happens here. Yeah. Might have accidentally given them a hell of a kick. Okay. Um, can we get an environment with something trampleable? Like these trees? Yep. Yeah. Hmm. So that's just flat out wrong right now. 
which is a bad sign. Oh wow, yeah, oh, oh yikes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Okay, so plus side, minus side, plus side, defeat. Now do this thing where they indeed produce some um, amount of impact. Minus side, they now do it by a ludicrous amount. Behold, how it's just made four holes. Um, part of the problem there was that somehow... Um, okay. So the issue is that the, when we moved the airship, it updated the foot positions, but it didn't update them fully. The reason is that init legs isn't doing it fully. So let's just force it. There we go. Cronk. Now, um, the feet will actually start out where they should start out, but um, they might still be far too strong in terms of weight. And we're going to have to see a bit about how badly we're off. Well, one way in which we're badly off is that it, the, the positions are just wrong. Um, it sort of looks like it's just incorrectly reporting the ship's x coordinate as zero, even when it ain't. Which isn't great. So using play ship tool and play ship tool just play ship. Then we do init legs. Yep. And call init legs in this one. And call move foot to. Then we just call update foot position. We'd set immediately. Wait. Set to false, duh. Okay, set this to true and then maybe it will actually work. Once we've got that vaguely fixed, I'm gonna call it a stream for now because I should go forth and interact with my partner who has arrived. Nope. Big one. Okay, so now these are positioned correctly right from the start. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's just like sand, right? So it now works, but it's just far, far, far too powerful. Um, look at that, the poor thing. Let's just try it one more time with a much smaller launcher to see if it's, um, 
like a huge problem if we're orders of magnitude out or if we're just out by some fair amount. Uh, we're pretty far out. Bonk. It just it just falls straight down to bedrock. Yeah, that's cool. So look, we made a... Uh, that's, to that's a totally awesome and completely stupid side effect. Um, it's now digging. It's now digging a tunnel. Well, it was a digging a tunnel. Um, through to the enemy. Uh, so that's nice. <laughs> but yeah, um, needs some work in the orders of magnitude department. I have to go through the various things that make sure that um, I didn't like do some calculation wrong and then um, potentially it just needs a kind of it's just going to be a question of adjusting and reducing things a bit to make the um, impact of it less extreme. Okay, um, so that's that for now. We now have um, actual physics objects as feet. They are a bit too stompy um, when moving. They are, if anything, not stompy enough when not moving. Because note that... Um, Um, okay, that's just... Uh, but yeah, note that it's still happily balancing on here. Just bad. But the moment we move, it kind of, you know, tramples them all to death. So yeah, going to have to look into like static versus dynamic pressure. Static pressure is too low, dynamic pressure is too high. But fundamentally, kind of works, right? So that's nice. Oh, and they're, they're dimensionless right now, which is also a bit of a maybe a bug. I'll look into that. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, land ships trample and stumble on. Um, I will do another stream soon, hopefully, and I hope you enjoyed this current stream iteration. Okay, bye for now. Pressing buttons, pressing buttons, this button.